Hey guys, let's talk about batteries. Probably the first thing to go on any vehicle, if you're lucky, I guess. Uh, back in around September, October time frame, uh, that battery over there went bad on me, out of warranty, uh, of course. Uh, so I went to Sam's and I got a Duracell, regular old flood, uh, flooded lead acid battery with the caps. You can check it, check the fluid in it, you know, old school. Uh, I made the decision at that time not to change the OEM battery because it had just been changed in warranty uh, less than eight months before. Uh, everything I re read says don't do that. Uh, change them both at the same time and put the exact type of battery uh, in it that uh, is on the other side. This is the last battery in the world I'd recommend here. This is a flood, flood, flooded lead acid battery, but you can't check the water in it. So it's, it's not an AGM. Uh, it's vented. It's vented to the atmosphere right now. So if it either overcharges or heat, whatever, eventually all batteries are going to lose of water. Ex except for the AGMs, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But this battery right here, uh, its life is probably as good as the water level, because once the water level drops to uh, uh, below the plates, the battery's going to go south fast, very fast. So these, what they call maintenance-free, they're not maintenance-free, they're, they're just capless. You can't check them there cap free. Uh, AGM is a different story. I've never had one. Probably be my next battery. They're a little more expensive, but they may be worth it. The reason I say that is because an AGM is a, a, it's a, it's a lead acid battery. Some people confuse it with gel cell, but it's not. Uh, it's a lead acid battery, but it doesn't have, it's not a flooded lead, lead acid battery. It's a absorbed glass mat. Uh, material, AGM. That that's a that's a pretty good design, but it can be abused easier than a regular uh, regular battery, uh, flooded lead acid battery. The reason I say that is because an AGM is designed to uh, r run at a float charge of about 13.2 to 13.6. If you've got an old truck, an old vehicle, uh, and they, they don't have the, the new modern electronics to control the battery float voltage, you could overcharge an AGM easily. And what would happen is that what they call a valve, they, they call them uh, uh, valve regulated. I call it a pop valve, uh, relief valve, uh, back pressure valve, whatever you want. But what happens in an AGM, you're holding pressure on the case. So if you get a little evaporation from the, from the, uh, if it gases a little bit, well, it's not gonna, it's not gonna go, it's not gonna leak out because the pressure is designed, to, the case is designed to hold pressure. Now it'll get to a certain point, and then that vent valve is gonna release it, and then you've lost it, can't get it back, can't add it back. The older vehicles, they put out a straight 14.4 volt charge. So if you're on a very long trip with an old vehicle and an AGM battery, you could overcharge it, and you could potentially reduce a life or screw it up. Um, but I like, the, I, like, I like the idea of the AGM, and I'll tell you why. Uh, you can mount them sideways. You can mount them upside down uh, as long as you charge them properly, and uh, that's the main thing. If you have to charge it, you don't want to overcharge it. You want to use a, uh, a uh, charger that's designed to charge AGM because a regular old charger like that Schumacher there, it'll put out 15, 16 volts if it needs to. This is a, seven, a NOCO Genius 7200. I just bought that. And uh, I'm going to, uh, I didn't buy it because I'm planning on buying an AGM, which I probably will, but I just bought it because I wanted a new charger. It's only a... Uh, it's only an eight amp charger, but um, 
I wanted something other than the Schumacher. The Schumacher's uh, a good charger, but boy, it puts out way too much amperage for some of the stuff I got. Anyway, back to the AGM. The AGM, you can mount it sideways, you can mount it any way you want to, and uh, it won't leak. So if you bust the case, it's not gonna leak all down the bottom of your truck and screw it up. I had that happen on my 95 uh, Dodge Cummins. It, uh, I went five years with that battery over on that side. And uh, one day I lifted the hood to check the oil or do something, and boy, that acid had run all over everything. Truck was still starting. Uh, fine, I never had any, any indication that I had a leaking battery until I looked at it. And it had rusted, mostly superficial. I ended up pulling all that crap out and painting it and stuff. But um, it, uh, it did a lot of damage. That won't happen with a, uh, a AGM and it won't happen with a gel cell. But gel cell is out of the discussion for putting those in, in vehicles as far as, I, as far as I can see. Cost prohibitive and uh, I, I don't think you can even get, get, to, get a size that will fit these trucks. And there's no real advantage. They got a, they made of a different material, silica or something, but there's no, I don't see any advantage over a, a AGM. And an AGM is just a, in the case of the SAMs, I probably could have got an AGM instead of that flooded lead acid battery for maybe $20 more, which in hindsight, maybe I should have done that. Maybe should, in hindsight, I probably should have changed both of them. I think that's the answer. We're gonna look at some, amps after a while and volts in them. I'll show you why I say that. But um, hey, you live and you learn, you know? And, uh, but, the, but the AGM, they're, they're, they're more sensitive to, uh, to charging. That's the, that's the only thing about it. The old flooded lead acid battery, you know, I'm old school. An $8 hydrometer will check that battery. And, you know, as batteries get older, they lose life. They don't maintain their life forever. They get weaker. The older they get, the weaker they get. You can see that on a hydrometer. $8 hydrometer from O'Reilly's, whatever you like. And uh, I'll show you the caps after a while. So if you're going to get a, flood, a flooded lead acid battery, by all means, get one that you can add water. Adding water doesn't hurt a battery at all. In fact, you definitely don't want to let that water level drop below those plates because you, you just soon take the battery out and chunk it. Uh, it's kind of like when you boil water, salt water. Oh, well, you're getting distilled fresh water off the top. The salt stays in the pot. Same thing with a battery. When a battery uses water, it's just using the water. It's not using the sulfuric acid. Now you're getting hydrogen off, and we all know about hydrogen. The blimp, but uh, anyway, so uh, I'm going to uh, get my big ugly wad of head out of this <laughs> out of this uh, photo here, and we're going to look at uh, some of the details here. By the way, uh, brand brand name uh, that's like arguing about what oil is the best, but. Um, I'm still of the opinion, you get three years out of a standard battery, throw it away. <laughs> uh, the things I'd look for is the purity of the lead. In other words, you want, preferably, you, you want low internal resistance of a battery. Uh, high, in, high internal resistance means it charges, it takes current slower and it puts out current slower. So resistance is bad inside of a battery. Resistance just eats up energy that could be used somewhere else. So, um, and so the purity of the lead is uh, probably, and the, and the amount of lead is probably one of the primary things about, uh, you know, judging the quality of a battery. One thing they all say is the slower you charge your battery, the better off you are. So. Of course, you can't always do that. Sometimes you, you know, you got to get going. But uh, if you got time, you know, charge it overnight on a, on, a, on a slow charge. A lot of people are trickle charging their batteries. I'm going to show you, we're going to read voltage after a while, and you're going to see why a trickle charge is not a bad idea on these things. 
Uh, I kind of scuffed at it at first when I first heard their idea, but if you don't drive your truck every day, it's probably not a bad idea. I haven't driven this truck since uh, Friday or Saturday. It's Tuesday, it's Mardi Gras day. So we're gonna see how that, uh, how that voltage looks. Okay, I got my amp meter. And like I said uh, about these old school batteries, you can pull these plugs, stick a hydrometer in there. You can check the elect electrolyte uh, specific gravity. And they'll tell you right now whether that's a good battery or not. And by the way, I did check this one uh, last night, even with it uh, pulled down a little bit, and we're gonna see that in a minute. And uh, it's fine, it's in the green. But uh, before we start, let's go ahead and uh, measure our voltage. This is where I need my third hand. But uh, so this is what's interesting right here. We got 12 point, what, four, six volts on these two batteries. You can walk over to the other side and you'll read exactly the same thing. I've done it. 12.6 uh, volts is, uh, or 12.46, 12.5. That's, we'll look at the chart, but that's about 80%, uh, 80%. That's not a fully charged battery. Now, the reason it's like that is because it's been sitting there. Uh, it's been sitting there since um, Friday without being used. The manual says if you don't use your battery, if you don't use your truck uh, in 20 days, your batteries could be drawn down to a point where they, uh, uh, your truck won't start. But um, anyway, uh, because there's a, a, a parasitic drain on these batteries all the time, the PCM, things are going on behind the scenes that we don't know about in these trucks. But I'm going to uh, go ahead and put my big, uh, uh, big Bertha here, this old Schumacher. Uh, 12 amp, but it'll put out about 17. I got it on a two amp setting, but uh, it puts out way more than that even on two amps. So let's go ahead and charge it up. Okay, she's plugged in. And uh, let's just look at, first we're gonna look at voltage. 12.96, and it'll just keep walking on up, 12.9. So, Big Bertha's putting out there. Now let me show you something. This is what makes me realize that I probably should have put two identical batteries in here. That's what you're supposed to do, you know? I'm just a hard-headed dumbass. That's what's leaving this battery. Okay, that's, this, this battery is tied to that other battery over there. So this battery, has got 2.7 amps going over there. What we're putting into the battery is almost eight amps. Sorry about it being upside down. You see that? Almost seven amps, uh, eight amps. So this battery, in my way of thinking, has been dumping over to that battery and it's pulled this battery down. This is a good battery. I know this is a good battery because I checked it with the hydrometer. So that rules out this battery. I don't know the state of that battery because it's, uh, oh, about a year old, I guess now. And uh, I just don't know the state of it. But, I, but we do know what we're seeing is that that battery over there we're putting in eight amps right here. Five of them are going into this battery and only two and a half are going over there. Now they were completely equalized. What do we say, 12.45? If you've got two batteries with different internal resistance, you're probably gonna see something like this. Uh, what, what we're seeing is 
the battery's trying to equalize when you shut down. At least that's in, in my way of thinking. Now some of that is that parasitic drain off of the battery. The end result is it's going to pull down both of them. They're both having to work harder. Okay, so we're over here on the uh, OEM battery. That's it right there. Right there. That's what we're putting into this battery. So that's my conclusion, guys, is that my good battery is having to work harder to bring this battery up to the same uh, static voltage when you shut down. And it's going to kill that battery quicker, and possibly this one too, because we got an imbalance there. Uh, we've got a totally different uh, brand of battery. They were put in at different times. I did everything wrong here. Everything wrong uh, when I put that single battery in. It's still under warranty. And I got places for these batteries. I got my boat needs a battery. But um, I don't, I'm not saying I'm going to change it yet. But uh, I think in hindsight it was a the wrong thing to do, uh, not changing them both at the same time. I haven't had any issues. Everything's working fine. But I'm, you know, trying to share my experiences, my, what I think is probably a negative experience. Uh, I really like the fact that I can check that battery over there with the hydrometer. I'm, you know, I'm just hard headed. But I'm also very worried about uh, sulfuric acid leaking out of a battery because I've had it happen twice now and it wasn't pretty at all. But anyway, I hope this helps guys and uh, until next time, adios.